Hi friends, it's Kylie back with you today, otherwise known as Paper Sweet Pea, and I'm a Creative Memories Advisor from here in Australia. It's an exciting day because it's another edition of Scrap With Me Times Three, where I'm collaborating with Noreen Smith, who is Organised and Creative Mum from Canada, and Lauren Hines, who is Craft Some Joy from the United States. In today's edition, we're all going to be creating a layout featuring the brand new What A Zoo 2 collection from Creative Memories, which I absolutely love. Don't forget that after this video, if you head to each of our individual websites, you will be able to purchase and download the instructions for each of our layouts so that you can recreate the same pages for yourself. And you can also head to Noreen's YouTube channel and Lauren's YouTube channel to see how they bring their layouts together. But I will link everything below this video for you. Now I am here live on the chat with you today and I'd love for you to say hi and we can all chat while we watch my page come together. But let's get started. Alrighty, so here's a little look at the page that I'm going to be creating with you all today from the Water Zoo 2 collection from Creative Memories. Now this is a fairly large collection. There's lots of papers and stickers and embellishments. If you haven't had a chance to check out the full collection, I highly recommend that you do so. And you can find the link to the website below this video. For us as a family, we love trips to the zoo. And I think one of our most favorite animals would be the giraffe. So I couldn't resist creating this cutesy giraffe for my page. And I really wanted to feature the brand new Zebra Stripe Border Maker cartridge that released at the same time as the Water Zoo 2 collection. And I'm just going to share how I've created this border down the side of my page. Now the other tools and supplies that you'll need to create this page is you're going to need both the circular and the oval custom cutting templates. You're going to need all three cutting blades, so the red, blue and the green. I worked with this punch from the piece by piece punch set. You're going to need your zebra stripe border maker cartridge, of course, as well as the original border maker system. You're going to need your adhesive, so repositional tape, foam squares, as well as the precision point adhesive pen. Now I really wanted to work with this paper from the Fast to Fab inspired paper pack, and this will be my background. I've also got a second paper from the same paper pack because I want to work with this spotted edge as well as the yellow side. And then I've also got this lovely green and the brown from the designer paper pack. I'm also going to need just a very small amount of white and black cardstock and I am using the shimmer black cardstock. And you're also going to need just some extra cardstock or another piece of designer paper to match your photos. This is, as I said, this is the page that I'm going to work with as my background. So you've already got this darker side edge here as well as some green foliage here on the side. Um, and I thought I'd just uh, layer a little more over this side border using my uh, Zebra Stripe BMC. So I'm going to bring in this green paper. I'll just move the background out of the way for the moment. And I want to punch two lengths using my border maker cartridge. So I'm just going to slide that into the housing bracket till it clicks. This is one of my most favorite tools. So many ways that you can work with it. I'm just going to slide my paper on in there, fold back that arm, and I'm just going to punch all the way along. You can see that we're left with that fabulous um, zebra stripe. Now, as you can see, it hasn't punched away separately from the paper. So I'm going to bring in my 12 inch trimmer because I actually want to use this uh, like fringing. So you can see here that I've got this very small edge, which we will keep, but I'm going to cut along this edge here so that we're left with sort of like um, a fringed edge. So I'm just going to place that into my 12 inch trimmer. It's very simple to do. And I'm just going to line up that edge on my trimmer with my straight blade and cut through. 
and you'll be seeing that what I'm left with is actually like a fringed border. So very simple. I'm going to repeat that step because we want two. So I'm just going to slide my paper back on in to the bracket. So we can lift that away for now. You can see that I've been left with lots of fabulous punched out confetti. All right, so the same deal, just bring in my 12 inch trimmer and I'm going to run the straight blade down that edge. And what I'm left with is another fringed edge. So we can lift that aside. Now basically what I want to do um, and this is where I love these faster fab pages is that you can build on the layers already present. I mean, these are designed um, exactly as the title says, fast to fab in no time at all. Um, and I'm just going to add that little bit of extra because, you know, that's what I like to do. So we're going to have our fringed border like so. And I thought I'd bring in a contrasting piece of paper. I really love um, the spotted edge on this Faster Fab page and I think I'll also be working with um, this yellow. I'm going to bring in my trimmer board and I'm going to trim a 1.25 inch wide strip by 12 inches so that this piece can then sit over the top of our fringed border like so and then we can add some decorative um, stickers as well and i'm just going to add a little bit of repositionable tape down that strip and that'll be positioned about a quarter of an inch in from the side like so and then i can just layer my spotted piece of paper over the top like so Very simple to do. And we're just going to center that to our fringed edge. I'm going to bring in both of my um, border sticker packs. I think I'm going to combine um, border edges from both of the packs. And I really like this scalloped edge. It's going to add some nice color to my page. So we can adhere that to the inside edge like so. And we'll add the second one as well. Just added just that little bit of extra color to the side of my page. And I'm going to finish with the leaves down the center of my page. So you just want to make sure that you line that up nice and centered because this is on sort of like a zigzag through the center, like so. So that just completes our little extra border. Now I have three photos that I want to use um, on my page today that are just perfect for this theme. And I love how um, the fence in these photos, it reminds me kind of um, like my little zebra stripe punch here that I've used in my border. So I'm going to work with the three just on a single page layout today. I can hear some of you sigh because I know a lot of you love double pages, but I mean, you can easily adapt a second page uh, to work with this layout as well. And I think I'm going to add my little giraffe here to the side. So we can lift these away for now. We'll begin working on our giraffe. So I'm going to work with this yellow strip here that's on one of the um, Faster Fab inspired papers. Um, and I know what you're thinking, you know, giraffes don't have tiger stripes. <laughs> but you know, paper sweet peas rule, if it's cute, it doesn't need to make sense. And that's certainly um, the case today. So. I'm bringing in my largest circle and we're going to first cut the head from this circle 
And to do so, I'm going to use my green cutting blade from the inside track of the large circle. So I'm just going to align that up to the bottom there and cut our circle. So that's going to be our face. The next um, cut that I'd like to make is I'm bringing in the second smallest oval template and I'm going to, we're going to need one cut from the yellow paper with our red blade. Like so. And the next step for this piece of paper, I'm just going to bring back in my 12 inch trimmer. And I just need to cut a strip to be 1.5 inches wide. Like so. I'm not too worried about the length because we can cut off um, any excess length that we like. So I think that measures to be, let's see, it's about six and a half inches long, but that will get cut down, as I said. All right, so we've got three pieces cut ready for our giraffe. It's probably not making any sense at the moment, but I promise it will. Next, I'm going to bring in this print paper from the designer paper pack. And I'm going to use the second largest oval with the red blade on the inside track. Like so. So next I'm going to take my smallest circle cutting template and I need to cut some circles using the blue blade. Now when I say some circles, I'm definitely going to need two circles for the head we can set aside and then I just want to cut a heap of circles for the body so I don't know say half a dozen to begin with and then we can always um, go back and cut more if you feel that you need more okay, the next step I'm just going to bring back in that same piece of paper and I'm just going to cut a half inch wide strip from that paper. Again, I'm not too fussed about the length of it because we can adjust that. But I'm going to, from that strip, just cut to around three inches, which is way more than what we're going to need. But it's so that we've got that ready for the giraffe's head. Now I'm also just using some of the shimmer black cardstock and white cardstock for the um, facial features. So this is for the eyes and the mouth. So I'm just going to bring in the smallest oval template with my blue blade and I'm going to cut two from white cardstock. And I'm just going to do the same cut again from the shimmer black cardstock. So the smallest oval template with the blue blade on the inside track. All right, so now the fun part, we get to bring our little giraffe to life. So to begin with, I'm going to take these two sized ovals that we cut and I'm just going to layer the black one over the top of the yellow like so. So it will be overhanging the top just a little bit. And just with my repositionable tape, I'll stick that down into place. Like so. Now with our circle, we've got our little snoot here, as I like to call it, a little nose. I'm actually going to attach that to the bottom of this circle with foam squares because I want it to have a little bit of dimension. And I promise you this is very simple to bring together. So we're just going to layer our oval to the base of the circle like so. And then this oval will be tucked in underneath 
uh, our little nose here and you can see that it's already coming to life we've given our giraffe a mouth I'm just going to use a repositionable tape for the mouth and it's going to get stuck centered at the base of that oval so we've got our head already into place so next we're going to add these little guys to the top of our giraffe's head now I did have to Google this because I would have called them horns and they're not horns. They're called ossicones. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure there'll be somebody that will correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but they're not horns. No, they're ossicones. There we go. I hope I've taught you something fabulous there today about a giraffe. I'd have called them horns, but I thought, no, let's get this correct. And these are going to attach to the top of the head. And this is what I said to you before. It doesn't really matter um, the length of them because you can just adjust it to suit where you like. But before I go any further, I'm just going to bring in my remainder of this yellow strip that we've been working with. I'm just going to cut that away. And this is where we just need to do a little bit, just a little, of freehand cutting and I'm just going to fold that in half a length again nothing's been measured too accurately there and then I'm just going to cut an ear shape now if you're more comfortable to go in with a pencil and you know draw an ear by all means do so I'm just going to go in and freehand cut my little giraffe's ears and because we folded the paper we know we're going to get them the same size and if they're too big you can go back and cut them down smaller now because I just want to have a lining to the ears I'm just going to do the same thing from this printed paper I'm fold that in half I'm actually just going to cut the lining of the ear just to be a little bit smaller. Like so. This is the point where you can check out, you know, how the size of your ears look. If you wish to go a bit smaller, you can cut them a bit smaller. No, I think I'm going to be quite happy with those. My little Aussie cones there. All right, so what we can do is adhere the lining of the ear to the base like so. And again, I'm just going to use my repositionable tape and for me personally, I like the effect that they're not perfect. More of a rustic um, appearance to it. That's what I like. Okay, so we can go in, let's pop a bit more repo tape and now adhere these little ears in place to the back of the head. So we've got one. I think he's looking very cute already. And two. Alrighty, so now we can work on our eyes. And I think I'd like the eyes to sit just above his snoot like so. So I've worked with two oval shapes for both. So it's just a matter, I guess, of adhering the pupil over the white of the eye as you like. I tend to um, sort of bring them into the side like so. Gives them a little bit more of an expression. Like so. Now I'm just going to bring in um, this punch from the Piece by Piece punch set. Um, and I'm going to use the larger of the two circle as a nostril for the giraffe so we'll need two of those and 
like so. Now I'm just going to take it up a notch just a little bit further and I want to add some eyelashes because every giraffe that I've ever come across, they all have gorgeous long eyelashes. So I think our giraffe should have some eyelashes too. And I'm just using the little half moon shape from the same punch. And this is where I'm going to bring in my precision point adhesive pen. Just add just a small dollop of glue to the back. And we're going to add some little eyelashes to our giraffe. All right, there we go. So next I need to bring in my giraffe's neck. Now the angle that I'm going to have him on my page, I sort of want the, the neck of my giraffe to be coming to the side like so. Alrighty, so we know we can adhere that behind the head. So I'll just add a little bit of Rico tape and it's really good to position things where you think you would like them before you actually stick them down. Now I know what you're thinking, he hasn't got spots yet, but we're going to get to that. <laughs> I'm just going to bring back in my black cardstock. And just get a straight edge happening because I want to use um, my zebra print BMC for the zebra's mane. So I'm just going to insert my black cardstock. I'm using the shimmer black, it's just got a nice glittery appearance to it. Okay. And the same principle as what we used for our border. Okay, I can bring back our giraffe now. And we can add our little black punched edge to behind the giraffe as its mane. So I'm just going to Add a bit of repositionable tape. And add it like so. And then we can just trim away the excess. Alrighty, so all that's left to do now is to add some spots to our giraffe. So I know um, a giraffe spots aren't perfect so if you want to you can just add spots as they are or I'm just going to randomly remove pieces um, from my circles so that they're all different size nothing's perfect and they will get added down my giraffe's neck And we can turn our little guy over and we can now adhere him into place where we like on our page. Like so. And when you're happy, just flip it over. And we're going to just trim away that excess of the neck, just with my scissors, following along the edge of my page. There we go, very cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit extra to my giraffe. I've taken two of these uh, leaf stickers from the designer sticker set that I'm just gonna add near the ears here. And I know what you're thinking, that makes no sense. But this is where my, if it looks cute, it doesn't need to make sense rule comes into play. And I'm just going to add a little love heart here. Our giraffe's looking very cute. So just add a little heart there over the leaves. 
and I've got three photos ready to add to my layout. So these two photos here I've allowed uh, five inches by four inches and then I have a four by four inch. So we need to cut some photo mats for them. I'll just lift our layout out of the way. I'm going to use this lovely aqua print for my photo mats. You could of course um, use cardstock if you prefer. But for my five inch by four inch photos, I'm going to trim my photo mats to 5.25 inches by 4.25 inches. And that measurement will just give a lovely edged frame around our photos. So 5.25 by 4.25. And you can see when I bring in my photos that it just has just enough showing in behind um, my photo. So for the final 4x4 four four photo, we need to have a photo mat that is 4.25 inches by 4.25 inches. Okay, so we've adhered them to the mats. And now we can layer our photos over in place like so, kind of wrapping around our giraffe. Right, so we'll add some little embellishments to the page. I love the layered embellishments and I've got the little don't feed the animals sign, <laughs> which is very cute. Which I'm just going to add to the top of my photos there. And I love this cute little monkey that's walking along. He looks very cheeky. I'm just going to add the little monkey to the top of my page. So, I've just created a little title down the bottom there using the alpha stickers as well as the adventures title sticker as well. But that pretty well completes my page for today. So there we have it friends. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me create my layout today. Don't forget that if you're in Australia and you have any questions at all about Creative Memories or any of the Creative Memories products that you've seen me working with today, feel free to drop me a line via the links below this video. Um, the same as if you are in Canada or the USA, you can get in touch with Noreen and Lauren whose links are below as well. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you very soon for another edition of Scrap With Me times 3. Bye!